Welcome to the inaugural Campus Compact Programming and Resources Outlook. I'm Bobby Lauer, President of Campus Compact, and I want to start today by saying thank you for taking the time to be with us today. We know that this is an incredibly busy time for you all as you welcome students back to campus, begin new initiatives with community partners, prepare for classes, and kick off this academic year. I have loved seeing stories and posts across social media about huge crowds at Welcome Back events and in many places, record setting student housing requests. As I talk to colleagues, there's a consistent feeling of hope and energy that is so refreshing after a few incredibly difficult years. At Campus Compact, we are also feeling energized and renewed in our mission. We, like all of you, know that the stakes are incredibly high. Civic and community engagement has never been more relevant and urgent. It is our work and our practice that is necessary if higher education is going to truly live up to its public mission. We must center racial equity and social justice. It must be the driver for all of the change and impact that we are seeking. It means that we must reshape how we are doing our work, who is at the table, and who are in positions of influence and power. The mental health of our students, faculty, staff, and community must be prioritized. This will require deep compassion and new support systems. The deep divides and polarization in our communities and the very real threats to our democracy require our campuses to act now and deepen our commitment to civic learning and democratic engagement in and out of the classroom, ensuring that our students have the skills and competencies necessary to be civic professionals, and that academic freedom is protected, and that we are actively contesting and dismantling inequities. Our communities, neighborhoods, and states are facing incredible challenges from homelessness to huge learning gaps in K-12 inequitable broadband access, devastating storms driven by climate change, and widening wealth gaps. Today, one in seven children are living in poverty, and 71% of those children are children of color. Our institutions have critical roles to play. We are positioned to not just be resources in our communities, but engaged anchors. This will require reconceiving how we utilize our assets taking a much, much more comprehensive approach to engagement and developing new partnership models. Over the past six months since taking on this role, I've had the chance to talk to so many of you who are deeply committed to this work, many who have dedicated their entire careers to civic and community engagement. I'm so appreciative to you all and to everyone who has shared openly and honestly with me about their hopes for what Campus Compact can do, their appreciation for what the organization has done in the past and their frustrations. We have taken all this feedback and this very large charge and have been hard at work to put a robust agenda for our coalition, one that is packed full of responsive programming, new networks and communities, tangible resources and support structures. All of this is aimed at building the capacity of you as individuals and your institutions to further your work and to create a more equitable and just world. This year, we're gonna be trying a lot of new things and bringing back some familiar resources and programs, ultimately ensuring that everything we do is grounded firmly in what you, our members need. I mentioned earlier that we must be more comprehensive in how we live out our engaged missions. That's gonna to translate to the approaches, the work and the individuals involved. This means that our programming and resources need to engage people across the entire campus because that's part of what makes our field so unique. Civic and community engagement is interdisciplinary and there are roles for everyone to play from presidents to procurement officers, to faculty, to practitioners. Today's presentation will be organized around our core member benefit pillars. 
You're gonna hear about key initiatives under each one of these. In total, we're featuring something like 30 different programs. Throughout this, you're also gonna be introduced to compact fellows. These fellows come from both within and outside of our field. They are all experts in their respective areas. Compact fellows will be working hand in hand with us this year to advance programming, development projects, key partnerships, and ultimately visioning for the future. I am in awe, and I know you will be as well, of this inaugural cohort of fellows. We look forward to sharing more with you about each of them in the coming weeks. It took a lot of work to figure out what we could squeeze into one hour. And I'm warning you, it's a lot. So much so that I'm confident we're gonna get some feedback that it might've been too much. But it's a lot because this moment demands a lot. And we are going to make sure that the return on value for being a Campus Compact member has never been higher. We're gonna be following up today's webinar with a detailed email full of next steps, including this recording. You're gonna get that in your inboxes next Tuesday. And we encourage and hope that you will share this email far and wide across your campuses. Our team, which includes our board of directors, our nationally distributed staff, and the incredible leaders and staff at our compact state and regional affiliates, we are all united in being responsive, action-oriented, and deeply supportive. I've asked four of our directors to join me in today's presentation. We're all going to be jumping in throughout this webinar, Matt, Natalie, Clayton, and Nicole. And to get us started, I'd like to welcome Clayton. Thank you very much, Bobby. Um, my name is Clayton Hurd. I'm the Director of Professional Development and Engaged Scholarship here at the Compact. I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of our networks and communities uh, with some of the other folks on the team. Uh, as a national network, Campus Compact is well positioned and very committed to bringing members together around shared interests and to advance common priorities. So to that end, we're continuing our efforts to provide space and support for a growing number of member-led affinity groups that are gathering throughout the year to advance institutional priorities, participate in professional development, build partnerships, share best practices, and support each other's work. There's no additional cost for individuals to participate in any of our affinity network activities. Uh, and today we're gonna highlight really just three specific affinity groups, but know that we're in the process of building out more through our conversations and in responsiveness to the desires of members of our coalition. Uh, the first network I wanted to talk about, some of you may be familiar with, is the Research University Civic Engagement Network, affectionately known as Truckin. Uh, Truckin is now entering its 15th year as a collegial network of Research One universities who gather annually and in person at a member host, in, uh, at a member host institution uh, in order to share knowledge and strategies, as well as brainstorm creative ways to approach specific challenges and opportunities that specifically confront research intensive higher education institutions. Truck and participants also have opportunities for connection throughout the year, meeting virtually to discuss issues of mutual interest and to imagine and disseminate resources and models that may be useful for the network and across higher education. Among the key themes of this year's truck and discussions um, will be uh, strengthening engagement in the challenge democracy, anti-racist pedagogies, cult and cultivating community voice in our engagement work. All campus compact members who are R1 institutions are eligible to participate in trucking. Our next trucking quarterly virtual meeting is scheduled for September, at which time we'll be organizing and framing this year's sustained conversation groups, as well as continuing our planning for the spring 2023 in person annual meeting. If you are at an R1 member institution and interested in learning more, uh, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. And I'm going to pass it now over to Natalie will highlight, highlight more of our other current affinity groups. Thank you, Clayton. My name is Natalie. I'm the Director of Partnership and Member Engagement for Campus Compact. Campus Compact has been dedicated to working with community colleges throughout our history. We are thrilled to relaunch our community college network. At its foundation, this network will be member-led and run. We've enlisted the leadership of two Campus Compact fellows, Deanna Villanueva Sacido, Associate Vice Chancellor for Center of Excellence and Inclusive Democracy at the Maricopa Community Colleges, will serve as the facilitator and key connector. 
and Lena Jones, Professor of Political Science at the Minneapolis College, will be engaging in a research agenda that will lead to an impact and capacity building institute in the summer of 2023. Campus Compact brought community college leaders together in May at Red Rocks Community College to brainstorm the needs of community college professionals and their campuses. In relaunching this network, we're going to deepen communication for shared learning and impact, as well as elevate member expertise. This network will help to foster partnerships and expand engagement in other compact offerings. The Community College Network will be partnering with campuses to support a webinar series on topics like food insecurity, sustainable community engagement courses, and pathways of public service and community engagement. In addition, we will sponsor two place-based site visits at member campuses. Lastly, with the leadership of four Community College Campus Compact board members, we are launching a President's Circle. The presidentially led meetings will provide collegial space to work through the issues, challenges, opportunities, and needs for advancing and centering civic and community engagement in the community college space. Next, I wanna talk about our Rural Engagement Network. Relaunching in the spring of 2023, the Rural Engagement Network will work to address the unique needs of rural campuses, building on the great work that is already happening across the country. To help us lead that work, we have asked Stephanie Lesperance, Chief Strategy Officer at Campus Compact for New Hampshire, to serve as the Rural Engaged Network Fellow. Campus Compact for New Hampshire has been a leader in supporting rural campuses, and we're excited to expand that work to the rest of the Campus Compact Coalition. Uh, we are excited. Oh, <laughs> this work will include assessing the needs of rural campuses across the country and also think about key ways to engage our rural campuses with our national service programs and other national partnerships. One partner that we're excited to specifically connect to the Rural Engagement Network is the Philadelphia Federal Reserve Anchor Economy Project, which will be releasing their data dashboard this fall. We're looking forward to sharing more about this data project and connecting our colleagues at the Fed with our rural serving members and exploring ways we can connect the project's dashboards to member needs and opportunities. I now hand it over to Nicole Springer. Thanks, Natalie. Um, hi, I'm Nicole. I'm the Director of Institutional Capacity Building, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about responsive programming. So when we say responsive programming, it means that we listen to our members and focus on supporting you when you need it most. From student community and civic engagement and engaged pedagogy strategies to reimagining partnerships with a focus on equity, we build capacity for positive impact. One way we do this is through our civic action planning. Civic action plans are the blueprints for the intentional alignment of an institution's practices along with its values. In 2016, the compact invited presidents and chancellors to sign on to create action plans for their institutions. It's now time to reevaluate where we have been and push ourselves to reimagine what civic action looks like in 2022 and beyond. To this end, we are going to launch a new round of civic action planning institutes. What is a Civic Action Planning Institute? Using an asset-based approach, institutional teams will be guided through a process of strategic organizing for impact focused on centering equity. We're going to launch two pathways for Civic Action Plans and the institutes that support their creation. The first is that if you are new to Civic Action Planning, have experienced a change in leadership, or your original plan didn't take off like you'd hoped, Get your team together and join us for a Civic Action Planning Institute, sort of like a 1.0. We're hosting an in-person institute at the Kumu Conference this October. And then after that, look for our virtual offerings in November of 2022, and then in both February and June of 2023. Following these virtual institutes, we will continue to support your institutional teams through a community of practice. The second path is for member campuses who have been utilizing their civic action plans and want to know how to move forward with their current plan or update it to meet current needs. During the fall of 2022, Campus Compact is bringing together a group of individuals who are integral in developing and implementing their institution's civic action plans to serve as an advisory board and design team to create a brand new institute for the campuses who find themselves needing this second path. We'll be hosting Civic Action Plan the next step in the spring of 2023. 
Ultimately, we want civic action planning to make sense for you and your unique context. We will give you the foundation and continue to work with you as you integrate civic engagement into your existing strategic plans, connect it to other plans like the All In Action Plan, or utilize it as part of your application for the Carnegie Elective Classification for Community Engagement. If you need help, I'm here for you. I can be reached either by email or you can submit your question on our website. Civic action planning is just one way that we can work together to build the capacity of your institution. We know that you have other needs and our entire team is here to help support you in a variety of ways. When we talk about technical assistance and strategic support, we mean it. Leverage our team in new ways. Let us support you and your specific needs, whether that's meeting with senior leadership on strategic planning, presenting to campus committees and work groups on civic and community engagement topics, or being a thought partner on a new program or initiative. We want to be at the top of your list. I'm now gonna hand things over to Matt, who will talk a little bit more about our national service program. Thanks, Nicole. My name is Matt Farley. I'm the Director of Administration and National Service for Campus Compact. The Compact and AmeriCorps have a 30 plus year history of collaborating and supporting each other's work by mobilizing individuals and communities across the country to advance social, economic, and environmental justice through capacity building and direct service work. We're excited to continue the partnership and build upon the Biden administration's renewed support for AmeriCorps and national service. Our VISTA project uh, is our first focus. Since the late 90s, the Compact and its state affiliate and uh, state and regional affiliates have leveraged VISTA to advance civic and community engagement on campuses across the country. This year, we're making history with our specific VISTA project. We received our largest federal support grant ever. We've increased our core size by 25% to 70 members, and we're truly a national project in geography as the compact as all compact member institutions across the country are eligible to apply to be a vista host site as a result of this current kind of shift for us we currently have host sites from massachusetts all the way to hawaii and everything in between our project has the option to address poverty on or off campus depending on what your campus needs and what the priorities are on campus americorps members support efforts to address the needs of low-income students and veterans through basic needs resources, academic interventions, and student support networks. Off campus, our projects support campus community partnerships that focus on K-12 success, workforce development, college readiness, access to healthcare, and environmental sustainability. AmeriCorps members build capacity for projects, really diverse projects, uh, through strategic planning, partnership development, volunteer mobilization, communication support, fundraising, and much, much more. And while we know you're all just kicking off this academic year this week, most likely, uh, the process for next year, for the 23-24 year, actually begins this fall. And on our slide are some timeframes for the application and member recruitment process. We'll begin with information sessions in just a few weeks uh, from now in mid-September, uh, and the process will go throughout the, the fall term. If you have a project that is ready for support right now, uh, please let us know immediately. We do have a limited number of spots, uh, AmeriCorps spots, still available for this year. And if we're successful with your, with your partnership, we can have someone start in November or December. So please let us know. We are also actively recruiting VISTA members to serve on campuses across the country. So please share our open positions with your alumni, colleagues, neighbors. Uh, we're looking all over the place for great folks that are willing to step up and serve. We recently announced a new national service initiative that's in the design phase, the College Renaissance Corps. This new program seeks to bridge the gaps among individuals who are seeking sustained family wages and economic mobility with in-demand sectors seeking qualified workers and community colleges who have training and degree programs aligned with industry standards. The College Renaissance Corps plans to utilize AmeriCorps members as ambassadors and near peer mentors and influencers who are positioned to educate potential students and the general public about the various sectors and related opportunities available to them through their local community college. Eric Lugo will be our national program director and we're excited to advance our work in three initial markets, Houston, Denver, and Chicago. The, this work could not be possible without the support 
that we are receiving from Serve Colorado and the One Star Foundation, who are funding this multi-sector design process. And while expanding program options are important, it's not the only way we seek to lead and innovate in the national service space this year and beyond. To support all this work, we're thrilled to bring on Mal Coles as our inaugural National Service Fellow. As you may know, Mal has 50 years of experience in national service, volunteering, and civic engagement starting in 1967 when he served as a VISTA member and culminating in 2021 when he served as the Acting Chief Executive Officer for AmeriCorps. Mal is a long supporter of the Compact, and we're grateful that he will serve as our strategic advisor and thought partner as we advance our partnerships and programs. We see national service with a work intersecting with key priority areas such as civic bridge building, student success, and co-generational problem solving. And so as a result, we're forging new partnerships with the organization listed on the slide that allow us to advance this work strategically. Also moving forward, we plan on playing a larger role in national advocacy to support AmeriCorps and related civic engagement efforts. Critical to this is furthering higher education's understanding of how to best partner with AmeriCorps. To that end, the Compact will be hosting a coalition conversation that is specifically for higher ed institutions who are AmeriCorps grant sponsors, not host sites, uh, and in this conversation, we'll focus on better understanding key issues facing higher ed grant sponsors, build a national network of support, and examine the need for future engagement with and for these institutions. This coalition conversation will be on October 20th from 3 to 4.30 Eastern Time. And now I'd like to invite Clayton back to share some resources that you can count on. Great, thank you, Matt. Uh, as you know, Campus Compact has a long history of producing key publications and book series and sort of go-to guides for community engagement practitioners, both to advance their own knowledge and really enhance their institution's capacity to build really sound infrastructure and programming for civic and community engagement. Um, we provided that through a robust library of publications and the curation of knowledge resources that address a diversity of key issues, opportunities, and challenges in our field. Um, I'm really enthused to share with you some new developments and how we're making these resources available to our members and to the broader field. As you may have noticed, if you visited uh, compat.org recently, we've completely revamped our website. And as part of that, we spent a lot of time designing, populating, and curating a vastly improved resource library. This is a project that's been many years in the making, and what it offers is an updated, searchable resource library where you can not only access thousands of individual resources as maybe you have in the past, but also curated collections, including knowledge hubs uh, that provide access to the most comprehensive set of relevant resources you'll find anywhere. Uh, organized around specific uh, areas of practice and issues in higher education, civic and community engagement. Uh, what's great about this new library is that it's searchable in, by a number of different criteria by practice area. If you're interested in knowing more about community partnerships or about service learning or about diversity, equity, and inclusion, you can find materials in those areas. You can look at particular types of resources, in particular articles, videos, guides, webinars, or you can search by issue area. If you're interested in racial equity or food security or criminal justice, those are also search criteria. The new library includes uh, an integrated but separately searchable syllabus repository to which we've added literally hundreds of new syllabi, many of them embedded and fully downloadable uh, and easily sorted by discipline or type of course uh, uh, or whether it's offered virtually or in person and of course by specific issue er and disciplinary areas. Um, one particularly unique feature of this new resource library is it allows you to create you, your own personal profile and favorite any of the resources you find useful, whether those are syllabi, collections, or individual resources, and you can save them on your profile so that you can return to them later for viewing, sharing, or downloading. Um, and if you don't find what you're looking for among the thousands of resources we have uh, in the library now, you can recommend materials to be added either by uploading copies uh, or providing links to us as well as bibliographic information and that we can use to upload them into the system. So we really do welcome your contributions of syllabi or key articles or tools that you found useful in your work so we can share and make them available to colleagues across the network. You can even recommend your own thematic collection of materials to publish on our website and serve as the recognized uh, collections curator. 
So nothing quite like the features of this new resource library exists in our field, and we're really excited to be hosting it and really excited to get your input and contributions to make it the most robust and useful resource it can be. Um, beyond this new website, Campus Compact is continuing our role as a publisher of key civic and community engagement books and guides through our ongoing partnership with Stylus Publishing. And I just wanna quickly remind people of a couple of relatively recent titles. One is uh, uh, the Community College for Democracy, an edited volume that offers case studies that highlight the diverse ways that community colleges are advancing their civic learning programs and missions by aligning those efforts with other institutional priorities. Uh, and the craft of community engaged teaching and learning, uh, which we will be utilizing in our national faculty development training that we'll be doing this year. And I'll share a little bit more about later. We also have two publications in the pipeline for this coming year. One which will be released this fall is called Educating Civic Professionals, a Civics Prompts Guide by Nick Longo. And this book is all about offering practical activities and conversation starters to support students' engagement and deliberative dialogue and their development of skills uh, to be effective bridge builders across difference. Uh, so with this publication, we'll be offering a range of workshop opportunities for members as well. And I'll talk about that in just a bit. A, a second upcoming uh, publication we're really amped about is the anti-racism uh, community engagement principles and practices. And I'll come back that, to that a little bit later as well in terms of some of the program we'll be, offer, we'll be able to offer in conjunction with the release of that book in the coming year. So uh, as always, we're always interested in new ideas for book, books and publications. And we have an open call for book prospectuses. So don't hesitate to reach out to me with any ideas or questions you may have about current or future publications. Uh, I'd now, now like to pass it over to Nicole to talk a bit more about some of the institutional assessment activities we'll be supporting in the coming year. Nicole? Thanks, Clayton. Campus Compact has long been interested in providing important benchmarking information for civic and community engagement in higher education. While we've taken some time off to reflect and think deeply about what's important and what do we need to know, we have also heard you and plan to launch a new book benchmarking survey in the summer of 2023. We know that our member survey has been, critical, has been a critical tool for institutionalizing our work and moving the field forward. We will engage strategic partners throughout this process to ensure that the instrument, this new instrument is not duplicative of existing tools, but truly a value add to the field. To assist us in our efforts, we will soon welcome an assessment and evaluation fellow this year to guide the process of creating this updated field survey. This fellow will also lend their expertise in refining the assessment and evaluation processes of the compact as a whole. The assessment and evaluation fellow will advance Campus Compact's agenda to collect the comprehensive field data that we all need from the network, provide important benchmarking information back to the field, and strengthen our capacity to engage in culturally responsive assessment and evaluation for all of our programs. The fellow will work alongside network members, compact staff, and other campus compact fellows to ensure that the network activities are inclusive, equitable, and grounded in the needs of you, our members. Furthering our commitment to raising up diverse voices and institutions in areas of capacity building, we are creating a space for chief engagement officers and center directors to learn from and with each other about resourcing for success during a six part webinar series set to launch in October. Dr. David Wirtz, a recognized expert and leader in resource development for community engagement will kick off the series. During the session, David will provide attendees with a landscape of fundraising and resource development in the community and civic engagement field. Each month, we will continue the conversation as we learn from and with our peers. We'll showcase centers, professors, professorships, and initiatives that are part of a donor-funded portfolio. There will be conversations with development professionals and time dedicated to state and local government funding opportunities. David will wrap all of this up to, uh, in a interactive session where he will facilitate conversation to uncover key learnings and takeaways. Beyond the virtual series, we are interested in launching a new community of practice to create space for community engagement professionals to share challenges and find community with others while exploring similar efforts. Interested Compact members are definitely encouraged to attend all six sessions. 
In addition to the work we are doing for institutional capacity building, we are also committed to providing deep transformational work for individuals through our relationship-centered professional development. We do this through a variety of initiatives. I will talk to you about two of them and then hand it over to Clayton to talk about the things that he previewed just uh, moments ago. The first is our Engaged Scholars Initiative. In 2008, Campus Compact convened an intentionally diverse group of 10 engaged faculty and staff who over the last decade and more have published, presented collaboratively, and taken on new leadership roles in their institutions and the field. We recognize the continuing need for diversity in field leaders and scholars, as well as a more critical scholarship and brought together a new cohort of faculty and practitioner scholars in 2018. The success of and feedback from those participants encouraged us to continue the initiative during the COVID-19 pandemic and create a national cohort of scholars during the 2020-2021 academic year. That year also marked the beginning of our partnership with the Lang Center for Civic and Social Responsibility at Swarthmore College. Earlier this month, Campus Compact and continued partnership with the Lang Center welcomed another cohort of 15 scholars that you can see on the screen. These individuals will spend a year together connecting, collaborating, and exploring community-engaged scholarship. We are also planning on starting an additional cohort group focused on mid-career individuals and newly tenured faculty. This is in response to some conversations we've been having with you, our members, and others across um, the field. Both cohort applications will open in early 2023, so be on the lookout. The second initiative is in response to a current gap in the field. Campus Compact has long been at the forefront of leadership development for civic and community engagement professionals. From our institutions like Diving In for newer professionals and Diving Deep for more seasoned folks, to our collaboration with great leaders in the field like Lena DeCilio, we have continued to provide relationship-centered professional development for our member campuses and beyond. Part of fostering relationships is listening to the feedback from our members and being in communication with other organizations dedicated to community-engaged scholarship and practice. We know that something's been missing in the area of professional development and plan to launch a new Civic Engagement Directors Leadership Institute in the summer of 2023. We are currently in the process of creating a design team of practitioner scholars who will work together to address this need. We've already invited some folks, but want to invite you to join your peers in co-creating this institute together. Your participation is instrumental to creating an institute that is beneficial for our diverse membership. This is an exciting time to come together and share in the knowledge of field leaders. As you're thinking about ways to support people on your campus, keep us in mind. This Leadership Institute will start accepting registrations early spring 2023. Now I'm gonna give it back to Clayton to talk a little bit more about the things that he previewed for you just moments ago. Thank you, Nicole. Um, can you hear me okay? For some reason, I'm getting the message that I'm not being heard, but it looks like that I am. Uh, in the coming year, Campus Compact will offer, will continue with some of our current offerings that you may be familiar with in professional development, but we'll also offer a range of new ones in specific priority areas. Um, so I wanna talk a little bit about those. One of our current offerings that we're continuing, of course, is the Community Engagement Professional Credentialing Program. Since we launched this program in 2019, we've had over 100 practitioners earn credentials across eight core competency areas. Starting September 7th, we'll be releasing a new credential in equity and inclusion that we've been piloting with great intention over the last year. With the release of this third and final core credential, individuals will now be able to begin or be able to uh, work towards earning status of being a fully certified community engagement professional through Campus Compact. We'll also be releasing two new credentials in the coming year, one in dialogue and deliberation and another in place-based engagement. For those interested in learning more about the credentialing program, uh, we'll be hosting info sessions in both the spring and fall, which will allow those who attend the opportunity to hear from, as well as ask questions to some of the folks who participated and benefited from their experience in the credentialing program. Um, beyond the credentialing program, we'll also be continuing our very popular communities of practice through the coming year. Uh, since the fall of 2019, we've convened over 60 communities of practice, 
involving over 800 practitioners who gather in cohorts on a quarterly basis to participate in discussions, networking, shared learning, relationship building, and, and, and other activities around key areas of community engagement practice. Uh, each of our communities of practice is convened and co-facilitated by two community engagement professionals from within our network. And we really appreciate and commend those who've been willing uh, and committed to stepping up to serve in a national capacity by serving as co-facilitators. This fall, we're offering 11 uh, communities of practice for members to participate in. The times and dates of those offerings will be announced in the first week of September and individuals in the network will be able to apply then. So look for an announcement in your email next week. We invite all interested individuals in the networks to join a COP uh, and also to consider serving as a co-facilitator uh, for a, a COP in the future. So beyond these ongoing professional development opportunities uh, and in response to conversations we've had with members throughout, uh, throughout the network over the last year, we're offering special priority programming in three specific areas. The first is around anti-racism in our civic and community engagement work. A key resource in this effort will be our upcoming public publication, Anti-Racist Community Engagement Principles and Practices that is due to be published in the summer of, of 2023. It's co-edited by a wonderful group of practitioner scholars that you see there on the slide and will offer a deep dive into the challenges, obstacles, and successes of practitioners who are undertaking anti-racist community engaged work. Uh, the book will include contributions from faculty, staff, administrators, practitioners, students, and their community collaborators who will offer insight into the diverse ways that anti-racism community engagement principles can be put into practice both on and off campuses. Uh, the book's co-editors will also be collaborating with us as equity and engagement writing fellows, which means they'll be working with us on a range of presentations and professional development workshops beginning in the spring of 2023 that will showcase the author's work and share strategies for how to implement uh, the four principles they highlight in their publication around anti-racist pedagogy and practice. So we're really excited about that. A second priority area for us in the coming year will be around faculty development. Throughout the year, year, we'll be offering virtual workshops as well as a couple of deep dive cohort based seminar experiences focused on key issues and equity centered community engaged teaching and learning. We're really pleased to have Dr. Star Plaxton Moore as our faculty uh, development fellow who will be sort of helping us develop and facilitate many of the offerings. The recent book she co-authored with Marshall Welch, The Craft of Community Engaged Learning and Teaching, a Blueprint for Faculty Development will serve as an essential resource in these offerings. We have two fall workshops already on the schedule. The first is about sharing creative models for faculty development. And the second is on engaging community partners as co-educators. Um, beyond these one-time seminar opportunities, we'll also be offering uh, deep dive experiences for faculty focused specifically on community engaged learning, course design or redesign. One will be a two day training in early January. The other will be a week long cohort based program scheduled to take place in summer of 2023. Folks who choose to participate in these more intensive trainings can expect to leave the experience with a newer revised course syllabus, some rich pedagogical resources and a plan for course implementation. And finally, our third priority area for professional development in the coming year is around facilitating dialogue and deliberation. Given the current situation related to political polarization, a climate crisis, and other dire problems in need of resolution, we're really prioritizing support for members to develop and enhance programs that build student skills in deliberative dialogue and bridge building across social difference. Uh, we are responding to the need to support students' development in what link, uh, as what uh, Nick Longo calls citizen professionals, giving them access to skills and experiences that both enhance their workforce preparation and aid their development uh, of broader civic leadership capacity. So we're very pleased to have Nick Longo collaborating with us as a Dialogue and Deliberation Fellow this year. He'll work with us to design, develop, and offer a range of workshops that will provide network members with practical tools or what he calls civic prompts that can be put to use with students and professional colleagues to develop their competencies as inclusive, civic-minded professionals and publicly engaged future leaders. Uh, these workshops and trainings are scheduled to begin this fall and will continue through the summer of 2023. Uh, some of the workshop themes you see mentioned on the slide. Um, I'm now going to send it over to Natalie to talk more about our plans to support transformative student experiences. 
Hi, all. Uh, before I dive in, I know we have thrown a lot at you. Bobby did not lie. There is a lot happening here. So take 30 seconds or so, stretch, grab some water, move around. Uh, we still have a little bit more to tell you, and we're super excited to get into that. So yeah, stretch, move, pet your dog, whatever you feel like doing. All right, I will start talking now about our transformational student experiences. So I'm eager to talk to you about our current student programming and also where we're headed. Ultimately, everything we do is focused on engaging students, but beyond just supporting you as a professional, we also want to create opportunities to directly support student networks and development. Uh, since 2011, over 1,700 students have been named Newman Civic Fellows. Uh, the fellowship recognizes and supports engaged students. Fellows are nominated by college and university presidents and chancellors on the basis of their motivation and potential for public leadership. These students represent the next generation of public problem solvers and civic leaders. They serve as national exemplars of the role that higher education can and does play in building a better world. The current cohort is coming together in Boston, October 28th and 29th, to network and learn from each other. Campus Compact makes every effort to ensure students are able to attend, to encourage participation and eliminate financial barriers. There's no registration cost and lodging is provided for all students. And any campus who's a member of Campus Compact can nominate a student. This is part of being a member. Nominations for the 23-24 cohort open on October 24th and they'll be due on February 1st. Uh, before that, in uh, December and January, we'll hold some application assistance sessions to answer any questions and help you find the best student to represent your campus in our new Newman cohort. Another element of our student program uh, is to encourage and support student research and elevate undergraduate student scholarship. We're looking at a number of ways to do this, including partnering with member institutions to bring opportunities to showcase their undergraduate research students. One of these partnerships is the Engaged Scholarship and Social Justice Undergraduate Research Con Conference that Harvard puts on. They have always encouraged other folks from, from campuses across the country to engage, and we're really excited to um, partner with Harvard to bring this conference to the broader compact audience and give your students a chance to present as well. And so what's next in student compact programming? Uh, Campus Compact is putting resources and energy into building dynamic student-facing programs. We are uniquely positioned to bring students together as change makers across their campuses and across the country. We will be working with our student engagement fellow, Lizette Cologne, assistant faculty in the School of Education at SUNY Buffalo, to examine current student community engagement offerings, identify gaps and barriers to engagement, and bring together students, staff, and faculty from all facets of our membership to create a deep and meaningful agenda of student-designed, student-led, and student-focused activities. Students are hungry to connect. They know they have an imperative role to play in strengthening our democracy and addressing the challenges in their communities. Our goal is to support these students in building their capacity to organize and advocate around the issues that they are passionate about. Through our existing network and by enlisting partners and funders, Compact is committed to building the infrastructure for sustainable, accessible network of inspiring and impactful student civic leaders. And now I will hand it back to Matt. Thanks, Natalie. Our coalition, both the people and the institutions that make it up, remain the underpinning of our work and as you've heard throughout this presentation, each of our activities centers members' voices, priorities, and expertise. This is where you can capitalize on your individual or institutional agency for change and move towards action by finding ways to support, shape, or lead our collective agenda. We know the folks that we've highlighted today are just the beginning and there's a lot of options out there. So we invite you to consider the following, right? Please propose how you can host or a new topic for a coalition conversation uh, on key topics that are emerging in your work and maybe in others across the fields. Propose or facilitate a community of practice that focuses on developing critical professional knowledge and skills. Co-sponsor a compact event, one of our symposia, conference, learning exchanges that bring together institutions and colleagues from across the country through in-person or virtual events. 
serve on an advisory committee or design team that helps to shape how we conceptualize and implement our mission through our activities. Coordinate a place-based network of colleagues and institutions who share the same local communities so that you can better organize for greater impact. Or propose a partnership with Compact that scales campus innovation to a national audience. We'd like to take a moment and highlight some of the quick examples of how member institutions are partnering with the Compact, and these are just the beginning. So we can partner together on a sustained initiative that engages multiple campuses across the country. For example, the Compact has just recently announced that we'll be expanding the reach and ensuring sustainability of the Pathways for Public Service and Civic Engagement Framework with the Haas Center for Public Service at Stanford and the Associated National Working Group. We can partner on an event. This year, we're working again with the Massachusetts Department of Higher Education and their partners, the New England Equity and Engagement Consortium and UMass Dartmouth to organize a symposium on anti-racist community engaged pedagogy, which will be scheduled for March 31st, 2023. This, will, this event will be offered in a hybrid format to expand access to the entire compact network, not just those that are based in Southern New England. You can help shape the field's leadership and professional development activities. For example, the Lang Center, who you've heard about earlier uh, at Swarthmore is our strategic partner for our Engaged Scholars Initiative. As a strategic partner, the Lang Center has contributed to the program design, facilitation, and hosted key program retreats, really helping to shape the experience for the members of that initiative. Across our networks, our affinity networks, members have opportunities to host convenings and site visits, which create a platform for showcasing your institution's work and capacity and expertise. For example, each year, Truckin has an annual meeting hosted by a network member, and in this past May, UMass Amherst hosted colleagues from across the country in integrated site visits with key community partners into the shared learning agenda. Clearly, there's a lot of ways to get involved with the Compact and to work with us and engage with us. Our shared future will be determined by our ability to advance our critical work together at a time when our communities, democracy, and world needs us more than ever. So please consider ways, big and small, that we might work together moving forward. And I'd like to invite Bobby back to review our final set of opportunities. Thanks, Matt. I'd like to now close out this outlook by sharing some of the biggest areas of growth for Campus Compact. Campus Compact is the professional home for community-engaged institutions, professionals, and faculty. We recognize excellence and advocate for the critical role of higher ed in building democracy, the economy, and our society. We also take very serious our role in pushing and challenging higher ed to do more and frankly, to do better. So first, we raise up exemplars. The Campus Compact Impact Awards annually recognize the very best in our field. We have awards dedicated to individuals, including early career and senior faculty, as well as for community engagement professionals. We also have two awards for institutional recognition. These awards are an excellent opportunity to showcase your work and excellence, both within Compact, but also to leverage that award as a differentiator within your state and region. So far, we've got an incredible group of applicants, but there's still time. Applications aren't due until September 30th. So please consider nominating a colleague or an institution or nominating your own institution. If you have questions or need support, we're also here for you. Getting, if you need help getting through the nomination process or just questions about the application, reach out to Clayton or anyone on our team. Next, our signature events. Throughout this presentation, the team has highlighted a number of in-person events that we're gonna be holding this academic year, particularly in the second half. We look forward to seeing you at a curriculum redesign institute, network convenience for truck in the community college network and rural serving institutions, and our civic engagement directors leadership institute. Additionally, we're gonna be holding site visits and pop-up convenings across the country. In short, we hope to see a lot of you this year, online and in person. I'm also excited to announce that campus, the Campus Compact Conference will be back in spring 2024 in person. 
We're going to be evaluating potential host sites this fall, and we expect to open the call for proposals next summer. Also of note is that beginning in 2024, we'll be holding our conference annually. We are actively interested in partners and collaborators from other organizations who want to work together around our annual conference to help maximize capacity, efficiently utilize resources, and ensure access within our field. Lastly, we are working with our board of directors to develop a renewed and updated vision for our engagement with presidents and chancellors this year and moving forward. That programming will specifically address the challenges and opportunities facing our institution CEOs. As one example, we're setting our sights on a new annual policy convening for presidents, the first of which will take place in fall 2023. And finally, advancing our field and voice. This body of work is perhaps where the most growth and innovation will be needed. In the 30 years since campus comp, 30 years plus since campus compact was formed, campuses across our country and globe have adopted community and civic engagement missions. A new field of professionals has emerged and community and based teaching and learning is embedded across the curriculum. But I know myself, like many of you, are constantly in conversations where the impact is questioned, the evidence case is still lacking, and the narrative has not fully matured. This is work that we must address. We must figure out new ways, better ways to tell our story, your story. The public perception and trust in higher ed overall is being questioned like never before. We, community engaged institutions and professionals, are an untapped resource and lever in that fight. We have to find new ways to get at the table, to communicate our work in ways that resonate with legislators, funders, and decision makers. In essence, we must renew the public contract between communities and higher ed and ensure that higher ed is an asset and not a liability in addressing the systemic inequities that have plagued our communities for generations. We will need to develop new resources to scale this work and our capacity to be change agents. Higher ed, and in particular, the community and civic engagement sector must find and foster new ways of working together. This includes organizations working at the national, state, and local levels. We and myself are deeply invested in supporting our collective ecosystem. And we look forward to building new bridges and repairing old ones as we advance all of this work. I'm excited to share an announcement that's hot off the presses and gets at the very goals I've just discussed. Just this week, Campus Compact and the US Department of Housing and Urban Development, that are known as HUD, signed an MOA to come together to focus on deepening connections and collaborations between higher ed and local regional HUD initiatives. As you know, there's a long history of collaboration between HUD and community engaged universities, most notably through the COPSI program that operated in the mid 90s through the early 2000s. This new partnership with HUD represents a renewed opportunity to reopen and open new lines of communication between HUD and engaged higher ed at both the local and federal levels. We're gonna do this work through the launch of the HUD and Higher Ed Engagement Network. To advance this new partnership and exciting initiative, we have welcomed several leading higher ed associations to collaborate with us. These include the Coalition of Urban and Metropolitan Universities, the Anchors Institution Task Force, and the University Economic Development Association. We also look forward to welcoming additional partners down the road. Okay, so I think we made it in just under an hour, looking at the time, it's 2.56. I wanna thank my co-presenters from today, Natalie, Nicole, Clayton, and Matt, and also someone who's been behind the scenes and making all of this happen. Molly Leeper, our Director of Communications. On the screen, you can see that we are committed to being in touch. This was one hour and our best chance at throwing a lot at you to give you a full sense of how excited we are and what we have coming down the pipe this year. There's gonna be an email coming your way next Tuesday and we can't wait to see what's ahead. Please have a great week and a wonderful Labor Day weekend.